original line gets set. Like I, I know we talked about where it's sure. being set. Sort of, sort of the sharp money is in is in sort of Central America. But do you have any insights on like how do they come up with the line? That the the game barely ends. The AFC NFC Championship is, is is just barely ending, and we've got a line right out of the gate. And and oftentimes I find not always, but oftentimes the line is pretty stable, doesn't move a lot. But but I'd love to hear what, how, what goes on in the background to make that happen. Is there can you have any insights on that? Yeah, it's um, it's a fascinating process. I'll go back once again to the Stardust in the 1990s. When I was in college, I used to go out on Sunday night and I'd go pick up some food as my routine. I'd watch all the NFL games and I'd drive out and I could get this A. I'm in Virginia. I could get this AM station for some reason out of like Ohio late at night, and they would have lot the Stardust line. It was called. It was a live show from the Stardust in Vegas over an Ohio AM radio station. And this was like 1994. It was pre-internet, so I couldn't listen to the internet radio. And they would talk about the numbers they're going to set. And then that would actually be the opening NFL line. This is about an hour after the games would end. And what they had back then was a lottery system where um, I'm going to move my aviator headset here. I didn't want to have to do that, but now I'm ready to land the good. chopper. <laughs> Get in the chopper. Good. Get in the chopper. <laughs> the, um, but it, seriously, though, they would have a show on live, talk about the number they would set. They would set it, and they had what they called a lottery system. And I'm actually having to think back on this because I forgot how, that's just how it even worked is um, – and professional bettors would get in line. They'd give them a number, and they'd get in line based on this lottery system, and they could go up there and bet. I think it was a maximum of oh. one or two bets for a maximum of like only one or $2,000, and then they'd have to get to the back of the line. So the Stardust basically was hanging themselves out on purpose because they wanted to have the number corrected before they opened it to the masses, and then all the other sports books would copy it the next day on Monday morning. This worked up up till the early 2000s, and then by the early to mid 2000s, when I mentioned that Costa Rica took over, there's two or three big boys down there that an hour after kickoff on Sunday night would post their numbers, two or three of them at a time. They might vary by a point or so, and the key to all this, guys, is the limits are low, um, and I'll put this in perspective. On an NFL Sunday, and it's based on the uncertainty by the sports book, and that's another reason you can look at what sports are beatable. If you want to just figure out which sport you want to beat, look at the limits. Uh, NASCAR, one of my specialties, I don't release it really to my clients because the market is too small, but I do a NASCAR TV show. I like watching it. I actually enjoy it. Uh, maybe it's a $500 maximum bet. Um, if I was to release that to a couple hundred of my clients, first of all, they couldn't handle the market. I would move the line too much. And I, I realized this decades ago. And the NFL in perspective is maybe a 50,000 bet on Sunday they'll take. But on Sunday night, the week before, they'll take 1,000. So the limits are, are 2% of wow. what they might be on game day. Because first of all, they want to get the soft numbers corrected. They'll take a little bit of a hit. They'll let some people win long term because they're having a more accurate number for the other 99% of the bets that week. And also because information isn't known yet. The closing line is the most accurate line all week. And when I used to do my research decades ago, I always was like, should I be using the opening line, the middle line, the closing line? Ask that. Yeah. And yeah, you know, great. theoretically, you really should use the middle line because that's what people can play. But it varies all day. Um, but there's no question, and I didn't know this as an amateur, but there's no question you use the closing line over the opening line because it factors everything. And just an extreme example would be, say, LeBron James gets injured two hours before the game or is sick and doesn't play. The line's going to move like eight points. So if, if the Lakers are a 12-point favorite, they're going to be up to a four-point favorite at game time. That's the accurate line because he's not playing. So when you run your, run your research and whatnot, you want to use the closing line. But another important factor about the closing line is called beating closing line value. And this is how you can tell if you have a long-term edge. If you want to know if you could do this professionally and long-term, track your bets all season, look at the number you're playing middle of the day whenever you play the game, and then compare it to the closing line. And if you're beating the closing line more times than not, then you have an edge. And um, historically, our players beat them anywhere from one to two points, which is tremendous. Um, and that is the holy grail of sports betting is beating the closing line long-term. 